I call the member for Hughes. Deputy Speaker, and just before I start, I'd like to acknowledge the members of the Sikh community here in the gallery today, and I thank you for your interest. And I'm sure that many of you up there are suffering from this carbon tax, which this <laughs> government has inflicted upon you. So thank you for coming this afternoon. Yeah. Deputy Speaker, I'd like to uh, add my contribution to today's uh, matter of public importance on the subject: the adverse effect of the carbon tax on electricity and gas prices. So, Deputy Speaker, what's the uh, effect of this tax? A tax that our own Prime Minister promised before the last election, and we must never forget those exact words, there will be no carbon tax under a government I lead. And yet here we are debating that carbon tax. Let's not forget either what the Treasurer said before the last election, Deputy Speaker. And I quote, I quote word for word, no, it is not possible that we are bringing in a carbon tax. That is a hysterically inaccurate claim being made by the coalition. Well, here we are debating the carbon tax, which was an hysterically inaccurate claim according to our Treasurer. Now, to start with, Deputy Speaker, what's the effect of this tax? Well, we've seen the most recent release of inflation figures issued by the Australian Bureau of Statistics that detailed the largest ever increase in electricity prices since modern records have been kept. The largest increase since records have been kept in electricity prices. That's what's happened in the last quarter. And everyone knows the majority of that increase is largely responsible because of the carbon tax. The largest, the, the member from uh, Eden Monero interjects, he very well knows that the carbon tax is mainly responsible for that, and we would not have had these large electricity increases. It's very sad, Deputy Speaker, when we see this complete and utter denial from members of the government. They come into this chamber and they refuse to acknowledge the harm that their carbon tax is doing to the Australian population. Now, Deputy Speaker, what the other thing we need to remember is that this carbon tax is just getting started. It's just warming up. It started at $23 a tonne, but like the toxic and poisonous tax that this is, it goes up every year. It goes up to $37, and in fact, by the year 2050, Deputy Speaker, the carbon tax is not $23. It is $350 a tonne. That's what the tax does. It goes up. It escalates every year. So if you want a vision of the future under this Labor government and under their carbon tax, if you want a vision of the future, picture a world where your electricity bill goes up every single time you open it up, because that is what this carbon tax does. It will make electricity prices go up forever. What it will do, Deputy Speaker, things that our previous generations have taken for granted, the ability to heat our homes in winter. Under this government's policy, they will become a luxury for future generations of Australia, because they will not be able to turn and heat their homes in winter because of this carbon tax. Now, Deputy Speaker, when we hear um, members of the government come in and say, oh, it's all fine, carbon tax is going well, don't worry about it, everyone close your eyes and go back to sleep. We're trying, can you believe this? This is the same government that told us we would never even have a carbon tax? Listening to these people in this government, you would think, Deputy Speaker, they are living in a parallel universe. They simply do not have a clue of the damage that they are doing to households, to families. You should be listening to welfare groups, welfare groups that are warning that some of the poorest people in our societies can no longer afford to pay their electricity bill. They can no longer afford to turn their heater on at winter. That is the effect of this carbon tax. Deputy Speaker, I know of aged pensioners that are going to bed in winter at five o'clock simply because they can't afford to heat their house at night. That is what this carbon tax has done, and the problem is going to get worse. Now, Deputy Speaker, this government should listen to some of the words of the other former Labor members. Former New South Wales Labor Premier Christine Keneally, who said of the carbon tax, and I quote, Even ALP branch members are asking me in dismay, why did she do it when she said she wouldn't? Reducing or lessening the impact, possibly revoking the carbon tax if she referring to the Prime Minister, stays, is the one act of contrition that she needs to make. In doing so, she would tell 
the Australian people, I am sorry and I am listening to you. But we're not hearing sorry from this government. They're just denying it. We're not even hearing they're listening to the public about the harmful effects of this carbon tax. Now, Deputy Speaker, there's also the issue of what this effect is having on business in our community. We know those on the other side, completely dominated by the trade union, have absolutely no idea of the pressures that this tax is putting on business, especially small business. Our global competitors are laughing at us. We are the only nation in the world that is putting on a tax of this extent. It is putting our nation at a competitive disadvantage. And while we're in time for our Melbourne Cup metaphors, it's putting weight in our saddlebag. It puts us backwards. It makes us less competitive. It reduces our productivity. It is bad for our nation. But what we have seen, Deputy Speaker, is a complete not only denial, but a dangerous commercial naivety from those that are running this government. We saw it only this week with the mining tax, a mining tax that was personally negotiated by none other than the Prime Minister and the Treasurer of this country, where they sat down and they were played off a break. They were played off a break by the mining companies, because it looks like this great mining tax that was supposed to raise $9 billion, then it was $4 billion, then it was $2 billion. We now know it might not even raise a single brass razoo, not even one cent. You could just imagine the commercial naivety of our Prime Minister and Treasurer trying to negotiate that with business. It just shows that they do not have a clue. Yeah, Deputy Speaker, the other thing that concerns me um, about how the lack of commercial naivety of this government, the comments by our Prime Minister, when she talked about what small business should do when they face these price increases from the carbon tax. The Prime Minister said in her own words to small business, this is the message she gave to small business out there, and I hope they're listening, she said, to show how little idea our Prime Minister actually has. Quote, you would be in a position to pass that on to people who buy services from your business, and we have expected that those costs would be passed on. What a dangerous and naive commercial incompetence that we have. Small business can't pass these costs on, Deputy Speaker. And not only small business, it's also exporters. How are exporters in Australia meant to pass those costs on when the carbon tax is charged on the goods they produce, but their overseas competitors don't pay that carbon tax? It simply puts our nation, the people that we rely on, the producers of this country, the people that underwrite our prosperity, that we need to fund everything in the future, it puts them at a competitive disadvantage and brings us all down, Deputy Speaker. But this government simply does not understand. Now, Deputy Speaker, at least around the world, they're starting to wake up. Only this week, in the UK, John Hayes, the, governments, the UK government's new minister for the Department of Energy and Climate Change, said, and I quote, we can no longer have wind turbines imposed on communities. I can't single-handedly build a new Jerusalem but I can protect our green and pleasant land. And he stirringly declared, I'm saying enough is enough. And that's right, Deputy Speaker. Enough is enough. At this next election, this next election will be a referendum on the carbon tax. But it will not only be a referendum on the carbon tax. Everyone that's in the gallery and everyone listening today, you will have two choices at the next election. You will have choice of Labor's carbon tax, which increases year after year after year forever. And then it morphs, in, morphs into an ETS. And by the year 2050, under this government's plans, we will be sending $57 billion of the wealth of this nation overseas to carb, foreign carbon traders. And what we will get back, Deputy Speaker, for that $57 billion? We will get a shiny piece of paper and we might even get a, in a nice frame that says we are permitted to emit carbon dioxide. Deputy Speaker, this government comes in here and today they are talking about funding the National Disability Insurance Scheme. They talked about it. They haven't got a clue how they're going to fund it. How are we possibly going to fund it in the future if we've got to send $57 billion, almost 1.5 1 per cent of our GDP, overseas to foreign carbon traders? So, Deputy Speaker, this, ref this is the most important election we have coming up. It's very clear. If the coalition wins this next election, we will come into this parliament and, as, as 
our leader Tony Abbott has promised, on the very first sitting day, we will introduce Order. legislation to repeal this carbon tax Order. in entirety. Order. Member for Hughes's time has expired.